This one is 3.3. Here we have a beam on which this load is acting at an angle. And there are two supports here. This support right here is such a way that it will allow for rotation but not allow for any motion in the x and y direction. So now for convenience we can divide this force into two components and based on this angle the component that is vertical to the beam will become W0 cos 30 and this component right here will become W0 sin 30. Now since we are interested in drawing shear force and bending moment diagram this W cos 30 is the one which will generate shear force and bending moment in the beam. So I can separately draw this beam only considering the vertical loads now. So now we have a situation where we have this uniformly distributed load and I can mark this load W0 cos 30 with a new variable W1 and from the reaction support point I will have a reaction at this point here and another reaction here. So this is basically a reaction here and a reaction at this point. So I am marking this as R1 and this one as R2 there. This will of course have a reaction going in the x direction also but that will be considered when we analyze the actual force which is W0 sin 30. Now to find out this R1 and R2 I can replace this distributed load here right at the center of this beam because it is a uniformly distributed load. So this is W1 times the distance on which it is acting. So where this will be applied, it will be applied right at the center of the beam. So this is L by 2, this one is L by 2. Now this support that we see here, this was at a distance of L by 3 from this side. So this is L by 3. So to calculate the value of R1 and R2, I can take movement about 0.1 and 0.2 here. So if I take movement about 0.1, I will get W1 L times L over 2 is equals to R2 times 2 L by 3. Similarly, if I take movement about 0.2, I can write W1 L times this distance right here. So this one is going to be this L by 2 minus L by 3. So L by 2 minus L by 3 goes here and this will balance your R1 with a distance of 2L over 3. So this here gives us the value of R2 which is 3W1L divided by 4. Similarly from here we get R1 which is W1L divided by 4. So now let's redraw this beam again. Now to analyze this beam, how many cuts do we require? We require one cut somewhere here and another cut right there. So this one is our cut number one and this one is your cut number two. So if I analyze my cut two first, this is where the cut is happening. And your cuts are always made at a distance of x from here. And this is at x, total length is L, so this is going to be L minus x. Now looking at the forces, the right part of this cut is going to be easy for us to analyze. So let's draw the right part here. This distance is L minus x. And since we have a negative face open here, your shear force will be applied downwards. And bending movement is going to be this way here. So this is V and this one is MB. Let's mark this as B2 and MB2. So now this is equivalent to V2 and MB2 going here and since this was W1 we can apply this right at the center and multiply it by the length which is L minus X and this distance and this distance is L minus X divided by 2. So if I do the force balance here you can see that your V2 is going to be minus of this so minus W1 L minus X or W1 times x minus l. If I take moment about this point here, you are going to have mb2 is equals to minus w1 l minus x. This is the force and the distance is going to be l minus x divided by 2 
so this becomes a square divided by 2 so these are the values for cut 2 now if I go for this cut 1 right here now in the case of cut 1 it is going to be easier for us to analyze this left part here again our cut is going to be at a distance of x so let me say that this is your cut 1 so on cut 1 we are going to have this distributed force which is w1 for a distance of x and on this end right here we have r1 so again we can draw an equivalent diagram for this so your force is going to be w1 times x because distributed force on a distance of x it's going to be right at the center so this distance is x over 2 this is also x over 2 we have this which is your reaction force r1 that we have already calculated right here so now in cut 1 since we had a negative phase our shear force was acting downwards and movement was acting in this manner here now for cut 1 we have a positive phase opened up here so your shear force is going to be up and bending moment is going to be this way so this is here this one is here and let's call them v1 and mv1 here right so now we can do the force balance and movement balance on this so if I do the force balance your v1 plus r1 is equals to w1x and if I take movement about this point here then we have r1 times x minus w1x at a distance of x over 2 this is going to be anti-clockwise and your mv1 is also anti-clockwise equals to 0 so we know the value of r1 which is w1 l over 4 so we can bring it here so your v1 comes out as w1 if i take x common then x minus l by 4 and your mv1 value here will be minus w1 x square divided by 2 and if i substitute r1 there so it's going to be plus w1 x l divided by for there so now we have all the values so let's start plotting these so let me draw this beam we had a support here a support here and all throughout here we had this w1 acting on it which is w0 cos 30 so for the shear force let's divide this beam into these segments where your cut 1 and cut 2 are valid so this area is for your cut 1 and this one right here is for cut 2. So if I am plotting your shear force, so let's look at your V2 value. V2 is right here. Now V2 seems to be a straight line with a linear function shown there. So for this we need two values. So the boundary for cut 2 are 2L over 3 and L here. If I substitute x equals to L in this equation, I get zero so we are going to start here and if i substitute x equals to 2 l over 3 in this so 2 l over 3 minus l becomes minus l over 3 so we are going to get a negative value so we can connect this via straight line here and we can mark this value as minus w1 l divided by 3 so that's how we get v2 now let's look for your v1 now v1 is valid between x equals to 0 and 2 l over 3 so from here to here so again we can plot this at the boundary so let's look at the value of this at 0 here so value of this at 0 is minus w l over 4 so which is going to be somewhere here so we have minus w l over 4 and at x equals to 2 l over 3 we can calculate this so 2 l over 3 minus l over 4 so we are going to get 5 over 12 from here so we are going to get 5 over 12 on the positive side so which is somewhere here so I can connect in this manner okay now this is something very interesting this is the point where your v1 is supposed to go down to 0 so you can see from this equation this has to be at x equals to l by 4 so now this is your shear force diagram to complete this if I highlight it so this is how you are starting this is how you are going here and this is how you are coming down and this is what we have here now in terms of 
this drop right here this drop is equal to the reaction force that we have here which is r2 so if you look at the value of r2 this drop is going to be equal to that let's mark all these values here this one is 5 over 12 w1 l here and this one is shear force at 0 which is minus w1 l divided by 4 so this completes your shear force diagram for now the next is your bending moment plot so if you have to plot this mb2 now this is an equation of parabola so for the parabola we will require two endpoint values and where the peak is happening for the parabola so if you look at this there this is for the cut 2 so it's going to be valid between this point right here and this point so we can calculate the value at x equals to l and x equals to 2 l by 3 so those are the values that we need to have so if i evaluate that at x equals to l we get 0 here and if i evaluate this at x equals to 2 l by 3 so i am going to get minus w1 from 2 l by 3 we are going to get l by 3 whole square so we are going to get 9 from square so w1 l square divided by 18 so if i plot with respect to this axis here so at x equals to l we have a value which is 0 here and at x equals to 2 l by 3 we get a negative value which is minus w1 l square divided by 18 now if you look at this equation the slope of this equation is also going to be 0 here so if i connect them in this manner the slope goes down to 0 at that point so this is how this parabola is going to look now let's focus on the other side which is your mb1 this is also a parabola and since a constant term that is coming with x square is a negative so this is also going to be opening down similar to this case which is a parabola opening downwards now what are the two boundary values we need to evaluate this is between 0 and 2l over 3 so if i calculate this at 0 the value of this is going to be 0 right and the value at 2l over 3 is going to be minus w1 divided by 2 2 by 3 whole square is going to be 4 over 9 l square plus w1 2 l over 3 is going to give you w square over 6 and if you simplify this this comes out as minus w1 l square divided by 18 which is exactly same as this value so now we have to have a parabola that is starting from here ending here and that is opening downwards because of this negative sign here so it's going to get a peak somewhere in between right so where is that peak the peak should be when the derivative of this function here has to be equals to zero so let's check the deri derivative of mb1 with respect to x so from here we get minus w1 x and from here we get w1 l by so you can see that this is at x equals to l by 4 so right at this point somewhere here your parabola is going to get a peak so now we can complete this parabola we start like this gets the peak at l by 4 and then we complete it in this manner so that it reaches this value right here now what is the value here we can go to this equation substitute x equals to l by 4 because that's where the peak is happening and if I do this, your value comes out as W1 L square divided by 32 at this point. So now this is the final curve that you get for your bending moment. And the highest value on the positive side is this here and on the negative side is this right here. And interestingly, this will happen always whenever you are looking for a peak for a parabola, this will always happen where you are shear force is going down to zero and this is happening because of those differential equations where your d m b over d x is related to your shear force by this differential equation so now this is your shear force v x and this one is your m b x so that's how we get the curve and remember this w1 value was equals to w0 cos 30 so w0 square root 3 divided by 2 so we can substitute that here so that we can update all the values here. So that's the shear force bending moment diagram for the beam in this problem.